The Nintendo Switch is known for having ports from pretty much every console that's ever been made, and whether you love or hate this fact, most can agree that if you're gonna port older games over to the Switch, then leaving GameCube games off the table is mind-boggling, especially when two of those games were already remade for the Wii U, and with Luigi's Mansion being remade for the 3DS of all things. But even though I completely agree that Game Kube games on the Switch would be awesome, whether they be through remasters or put on Nintendo's online service, I think most people are overlooking the Wii's library. Sure, that little white box had a lot of shovelware on it, but there's also a lot of gold buried in there as well. And I'm not saying that ports should be a priority over new content, but if you're gonna remaster old games, then I think taking from the Wii makes more sense than the GameCube. Not because I think the Wii has better games, but because the Switch's features could cater better to the Wii's playstyle, mostly due to the Joy-Cons being Wii remotes on steroids. And I know Wii remote games have a bad reputation, but when done right, the experience is something you can't get on other consoles, and sometimes it's even better than a standard controller. So instead of talking about which Wii games to bring over to the Switch based on how fun they are, let's go over which ones are best catered for the Switch's hardware. Because while I'd love to have Mario Galaxies 1 and 2 on the Switch, and I do think Endog should bring them over, the motion controls didn't feel as natural there as they do in the other games I'm going to be talking about on the list. So change into your YouTube viewing clothes, stop making phony phone calls to Edward Rooney, press the subscribe button if you haven't already, and allow me, the three-time Black Belt Hall of Famer Cameron, to tell you the 10 best Wii games that'd be perfect for the Switch. Number 1. Metroid Prime Trilogy. This is probably the most obvious choice, not only because it's three really good games crammed into one, but because all three of these games utilize the Wii Remote's features perfectly. And with Metroid Prime's 1 and 2 originally being GameCube games, it also satisfy that crowd and get two birds stoned at once. I know that much like the rest of this list, games that were originally made to work with the Wii Remote and Nunchuck would need a lot of reconfiguration to work with the Joy-Cons and that it wouldn't be a matter of copy and pasting, since the technology in a Joy-Con's not the exact same thing as a Wii Remote or even a Wii Motion Plus, but I'm sure it's possible to make this work. And with Metroid Prime 4 on the horizon, what better way to give new fans a crash course into the franchise's history than by giving them a chance to play the first three games? There is no better way, I tell ya, so just make it happen, Nintendo. I'm not programmed to follow your orders. Number 2, Punch-Out. Even though this game sold pretty well on the Wii, I feel like it's often overlooked just for being a throwback, which is a real shame because I feel like it did everything the original games did even better. Regardless of which Punch-Out game's your favorite, though, porting this over to the Switch would be perfect, because even if Nintendo's hell-bent on forcing motion controls with the Joy-Cons, it probably wouldn't take a whole lot of work reconfiguring them for this game, at least compared to the other games that use the sensor bar. And if you're like me and don't feel like moving while playing a game, we'd still have the option to use the A and B buttons, meaning that if Punch-Out's brought to the Switch, everybody wins. Especially if it were a budget title, which I don't think would be out of the question given the game's length, and that porting it would be a transition smoother than my neighbor Terry's pickup lines. Number 3, Pikmin 1 and 2. Cause who doesn't love ports of ports, am I right? Much like Metroid Prime 1 and 2, these two games were originally on the GameCube, but in my opinion, the Wii versions of these four games are the rare occasions where I actually prefer using a pointer over a joystick, and I can understand why people would disagree with me on that with Metroid Prime, but I'll fight to the death that pointer controls are the way to go for Pikmin. And what makes Pikmin 1 and 2 even better for the Switch than the Wii is that even if you hate the pointer controls, Nintendo could just add the Pro Controller as an option to satisfy the GameCube purists. And given that Pikmin's still somehow underrated in 2019, I think putting the first two games on the Switch would do wonders for the series, since people buy any first-party games on Nintendo's little hybrid that could. And I think Pikmin's good enough to where people buying these games just for the sake of collecting them would fall in love with it once they actually played it, which would mean we'd probably get future Pikmin games more frequently, and that'd make me a happy, full-grown little boy. Number 4. Zack and Wiki's Quest for Barbarossa's Treasure. I'm sure half of you have probably heard about this game, but for those of you who don't know, it's a really awesome adventure puzzle game made by Capcom for the Wii that nobody's ever played. Sadly, this game's been released twice on the Wii and Wii U to relatively poor sales, since nobody was even told about it on the Wii, and, well, because nobody ever owned a Wii U. But I think with enough steam behind a Switch version, the third time could be the charm. Personally, I'd rather get a straight-up sequel, but since we're talking about Wii games that'd be perfect for the Switch, Zack and Wiki'd be perfect because you could just reconfigure the pointer controls to work with the joy Joy-Cons, and because it somehow stand out on the console with over a thousand games. As long as people actually know of its existence the third time around, anyway. Number 5. Wario Land Shake It. If you know what this game is, then I'm sure your first reaction might be to want to shove a Wii remote up me bum for suggesting that this game utilizes motion controls better than Mario Galaxy. But I'm not saying shaking your controller from time to time is a good use of motion controls. In fact, if Nintendo does port this game over to the Switch, then I think they should take motion controls out entirely, or at least make them optional. So how is it perfect for the Switch, you ask? Well, the Wii might not be portable, but the last time I checked, the Switch probably is. And some of the best games you can take with you on the go are 2D platformers, given that they could be played in short bursts. 
And I know some people still probably want to shove Wii AV cables up me bum for suggesting that WarioWare Shake It's the best 2D platformer on the Wii, but I'm not saying that either. But I do think there's a pretty good reason to prioritize bringing this particular game over to the Switch before other Wii games in the same genre. I mean, we already have New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, so bringing New Super Mario Bros. Wii over anytime soon would feel a little weird. And similarly, we already have Tropical Freeze on the Switch, which is much better than Donkey Kong Country Returns. Not to mention that game was already ported to the 3DS anyway. And for some unknown reason, Kirby's Epic Yarn was brought to the 3DS, with the Switch not getting its own version. You could bring Kirby's Return to Dream Land over, I suppose. But even then, we already have a Kirby game on the Switch, while Wario still MIA. And on top of all that, Wario Land Shake is a great 2D platformer that's incredibly overlooked. In fact, I'm sure the majority of you didn't even know it existed. And on top of re-releasing a quality Wii game that'd be perfect for the Switch and new to most people, Nintendo could even cash in on the Waluigi craze and add him to the game as a playable character. In fact, if Nintendo doesn't want dog poop lit on their Twitter's doorstep, then they'd better put Waluigi in the game if they port it over. But let's be honest, Nintendo's never gonna port this over, because I'm sure they even forgot it exists. I'm sure you might be wondering why I didn't include WarioWare Smooth Moves instead, which, spoiler alert, it's not on the list. But given the fact that there's like 8,000 minigames on there that are specifically made for the Wii, remote. It'd probably be easier to just make a new WarioWare altogether, which I'm sure they will. Number 6. The Trauma Center Games These games were made by Atlas, who are mainly known for their RPGs, but every now and then they like to throw us a curveball. The Trauma Center Games are more visual novels than anything else, but when push comes to shove, you've gotta put your gloves on and get to work by performing rectal surgeries using the motion and pointer controls, which as always, the Joy-Cons could hit it out of the park. And on top of the controls being perfect for the Switch, there's also not many games out there that are quite like these, and the Switch can certainly never have too much variety. Number 7. Marble Saga Kororimpa didn't you just love the tilt control puzzles in Breath of the Wild? No? Well then, how about a full game of them? Trust me, it sounds awful, but this game's actually pretty fun. You basically tilt your Wii remote all over the place to get this dumbass little marble to the goal, all while collecting things along the way. And since the original game doesn't even use Wii Motion Plus, converting it to work with a Switch tablet, Joy-Cons, or even a Pro Controller would be easier than scoring a date with my landlord. And speaking of tilt controls... Number 8. Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz Remember that marble game I talked about a long time ago? Well, screw that fucking BS and forget I even mentioned it. Just replace it with Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 if you want, I don't care. Everything that can be said about Marble Saga applies here, so I'm not gonna repeat myself. But the main difference is that this game is a lot more interesting and wacky, which is obvious from the game's title. So if you're watching this video and work at Sega, then just know that I'm gonna put a banana in your tailpipe if you don't make Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz for the Switch. No pun intended, even though I wrote this out beforehand. Number 9. Skyward Sword. The motion controls for Twilight Princess and the Wii were just shoehorned into the game to where shaking the Wii remote simply registered as a button press, which is actually why the No More Heroes games aren't on this list anymore. So unless you're a sick bastard who likes tasting samples of your own poop, you'd probably just rather use a standard controller for Twilight Princess. However, Skyward Sword was actually made from the ground up to utilize the Wii Motion Plus, which is very similar to the Joy-Con technology and doesn't even require a sensor bar. So reconfiguring this game to work with the Switch would be a lot easier than most of the games on this list. And this is just wishful thinking, but if the above average sized den really wanted to go the extra mile, then they could just give us an option to wield the sword with a single analog stick. We already know everybody wants this game due to the internet's reaction of a drunken Eiji Anuma speaking his mind at a Zelda concert in Japan, so it'd be nice if Nintendo gave the people what they want. I mean, it's not like they'd ever deny fans something awesome they'd be easy to deliver, right? Number 10. All the on-rail shooters. As much as I love Metroid and Zelda, the types of games that I think would be best suited for the Switch would be any and every on-rail shooter. It's not even necessarily my favorite genre either, but if you have a console with controllers that could work as light guns, then you'd better have as many on-rail shooters as possible if you want to avoid me challenging you to a fight only to cower away once you called my bluff. There have been rail shooters on home consoles before the Wii, but most of the time, they were considerably watered down from their arcade versions. Meanwhile, the Wii has amazing ports of the House of the Dead games, as well as plenty of original games like House of the Dead Overkill, Resident Evil Chronicles, Dead Space Extraction, Sin and Punishment, and probably a few more I don't know about. Again, I don't know how to configure Wii remote controls to work with Joy-Cons since the Switch doesn't have a sensor bar, but if mankind could make seedless watermelons, then I'm sure they could figure something out. However, what's 83 times cooler than on-rail shooters coming to the Switch, though, is every single badass who supports this channel on Patreon for silly rewards like loot boxes and Polaroids in the mail, but if you want to become a sexy beast and Patreon's not your cup of horse milk, then we also have t-shirts and coffee bugs available as well. And if you send us pictures or videos of you rocking the merch, then we'll put them in our videos like this badass right here. What Wii games would you want to see come to the Switch if you had to pick a few, though? Was there anything I missed? Are you sick of ports in general? Or is the pointer technology harder to convert over to the Joy-Cons than I think? Either way, let me know what you think in the comments below, and as always, I'll pin whatever I find most entertaining or intriguing. Don't forget to press the subscribe button if you're a sexy beast who likes being pandered to in end slates. And if you like and share this video, that too goes a long way to help this channel grow. My name's Cameron, and I'll see you next time. 
So I want to say thank you to your loyalty. Thank you for your support.